Apparently, I've lived anything but a normal life. And that is according to my friends. My stories of dating, sex, and life in general tend to make them laugh. And for years, they've told me I needed to share them with the world. So I decided that in the middle of a pandemic, it was a great time to start a podcast about the things that, well, entertain me. So grab a cocktail with us and welcome to the hot mess that is my life as an almost 40-year-old single makeup artist living in a college town in Florida. This is Kara's Lipstick Diary. Hey, you guys, welcome back. And yes, again, this is like totally not my normal day to drop. But when my crew comes to me and says, you have to film an episode with our employee, Luke. And I look at them really confused because Luke is only 18 years old. And I am totally confused as to why I need to film this episode. But apparently, Luke has a fabulous story. And I adore Luke. His Instagram makes him look like he's like a total 90s kid. And he looks like he should be hanging out with River Phoenix. And when I said that, he didn't know who River Phoenix was. And I was really depressed at how old I am. Because I could have seriously birthed him. But whatever. So I'm doing this episode. And I've also been told that I need to be drunk for this episode. And on top of that, we actually have a live studio audience today. So, Luke... Welcome to the show. I'm going to make my cocktail because, well, like I said, I was told by your boss that, like, I have to be drunk for this story. Well, yeah, obviously. So um, I'm going to make my cocktail. He's 18. So I gave him chocolate milk. Or as I like to call it, my chalky milk. Yes, yeah. it's his chalky milk. It's very fancy chocolate milk. And my drink has cream in it. So, you know, we're kind of drinking the same thing. Yeah. Mine just also has a lot of booze in it because apparently I'm supposed to be drunk. Yeah. So, Luke, let give me a premise of what the story is going to be since I they haven't really told me a whole lot about what's going on. So, in short, it's just a story. Of it's just a story. It's just a, <laughs> just a story that I need That's to be it. drunk Thank for you. in film. That's okay. The episode. Cool. Okay, Luke, explain a little bit more. So in short, it's a story of an Airbnb experience I had in December of last year, 2020, that I would say, personally, if I'm being honest, wasn't a five-star experience. Okay. In fact... Well, it wouldn't be a story if it was a five-star right, experience. Right. Um, so I'm assuming something crazy happen yeah, okay hold I, on you sorry. have to pause because i have okay. to like shake my drink Pausing. we're gonna hope i don't like ma- oh it's like oozing out this is ooh, why i'm not ooh, supposed to make cocktails ooh. you guys oh my god i'm making a disaster again i'm a hot mess you guys are used to this at this point it's okay it's on brand it is very yeah. on brand for me to be a hot mess and apparently i'm supposed to put a like dash of cinnamon on top of it ooh, i'm not sure like why but i am also called for vanilla extract. I'll put the recipe online, I promise. Okay, go ahead. Expand past this non-five-star experience at an Airbnb while I get drunk. So, like I said, it begins in December 2020. I was looking to go on kind of like a hiking, get-out-of-town trip. Um, I was okay. going to go with a friend. Seems of, pretty yeah, normal. Yeah, I was going to go with a friend of mine, but kind of last minute, week before he bailed. Um, well, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Friends do that. Yeah. And uh, this was immediately after Christmas, so that kind of Christmas before New Year's. Okay, um, that weird, break. awkward week? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was looking at one-person Airbnbs in the Helen, Georgia area, which for those of you who aren't familiar, um, it's basically in North Georgia, and it's got a lot of kind of rustic small-town stuff, but it's got German architecture because basically um, immigrants from Germany moved there forever ago, so it's got he all this interesting stuff. knows way more information about this than, like, I would ever know about places yeah. I vacation. So all you need to know is German architecture and big mountains for hiking. Okay, cool. Yeah. Got it. So I'm looking at places, and they're all too expensive, and I'm like, damn it, I don't... I don't want to pay this much. And then I understand. I was just looking yeah, for places yeah. down at the beach and everything was popping up. It's like $3,000 right. a night. And, and it's, like, and it's what like, what the fuck? I don't want to spend that. And it's like Airbnb. Who do you think you are? Yeah. I don't have money, but I want the experience. Yes. So I find it. Um, I learned oh, the price so range and it was, this is so cheap. A hundred dollars with fees for three nights. Oh, now, obviously it's like, okay, okay right there. That kind of scares me. But right, right. Me too. So I look at the reviews and home. you decided to do this alone. Yeah, yeah. So I look at the reviews. He's 18, y'all. <laughs> I look at the reviews, and there were 10 good ones. And I'm like, 10 good reviews. You know, Out of how many? 11. There was one bad one as well. Oh, so, yeah. okay, the review. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be fine, you know. And they all talked about the host. Um, 
And the host is kind of part of the experience. So basically how the Airbnb works is it's a little guest cabin um, on somebody's, you know, property in Georgia. Okay. And his... So you yeah. decided to go to a location by yourself where the host was part of the okay well, okay Kara, this, this is how you die you know this, this right this sounds stupid now just <laughs> just wait just wait <laughs> i feel like you're gonna question my level of like logic and mm -hmm. sanity as we go yeah on. i i really i'm really already questioning it i mean i've been yeah. known to travel alone yeah i traveled to new york alone but not where i have <sighs> yeah, yeah yeah it's a little different okay you know, i Thinking about it now, probably wouldn't do it a second time. Yeah. Oh. But um, anyway, it's enough for a podcast episode yeah. apparently. So hopefully, you don't do it again. Anyway, uh, guest cabin and main house. So he's on the property with you. You got your own little guest okay. cabin. So I book it um, and I drive up there, and it's like a long six and a half, seven hour drive. And so I'm, you know, feeling exhausted. By the time I'm turning onto the road where it's at, GPS is like. Turn right. So, um, thank God for GPS. It's it's five minutes away, and the road that I'm turning onto, like we were in a rural area, but you know there are houses on either side, and it was like paved. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be fine, you know. I'm not gonna be killed by a murderer right, in right, the woods, right. and so by myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we get there. We get there. But um, oh God. Anyway, so like. As, and this road goes slowly, slowly downhill towards the base of a river. And the houses I was talking about, they start disappearing. I'm like, where, where are all the houses going? Oh, God. I'm and I realize as I pull up and it's like turn left that I haven't seen any houses for the last two to three minutes. And when I turn the corner, I see him standing there on top of his property because it's like very sloped. And he's a silhouette in the dark of night. But I'm like, okay. It is creepy looking, but like... This he, sounds Bait Motel-esque. Right. He wants to Do let... Do you even know what that means? No. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. This is why I know I'm way old for him. It might be, it might be the 2002 thing. I'm not sure. But... Um, <laughs> I was in college. <laughs> and he was born. Okay, yeah, keep yeah. going. Keep um, going. I've anyway, got Bates Motel in my head. Anyway, so I pull up um, the driveway. So his property is laid out. Let me give you a little description. It's laid out very, very steep. Um, like super steep and it kind of like stretches out to the right. Okay. So he has this gravel driveway, my like little uh, red Chevy S10 1999 <laughs> truck with an engine, God bless its soul, isn't, isn't too powerful. It tries one time. I'm like, oh, I rolled down my window. I'm like, hey, it's not good enough. Oh, like, you try rolled again. it down? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, it okay. doesn't have a button. You got to crank it. <laughs> okay. So I try a second time. I try a third time. And the host goes, okay, you know what? Uh, just just leave it there. And I get out. And I, you know, so my, my truck is like 75% up his very steep driveway. I get out and... He has this patio area dividing um, the guest cabin in the main house. And I'm like, oh, let me go shake his hand and talk to him. And he's going to come up to me. But no, the host is grilling. He's on his grill with his back turned. So I have to walk up to him. And I go to shake his hand. I'm like, hi, host name. I'm Luke. And he's like, here is your bowl. And here is your chicken and onions <laughs> and squash. And so he like, made you dinner. Right, which was part of the reviews. A lot of the reviews had talked about the host. It's like, oh, the host is super nice and like he's like super interesting and he'll cook for you and he's got good recommendations. I'm like, yay, good host. Okay, I mean, I don't cook, so anyone who cooks for me is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I, I, I'm yeah. really good with a microwave <laughs> and a cocktail. Me too, me too. Like, I have my microwave recipes down pat. You know, yeah. it's all about like you got to do it more or slightly less than the box says. The box is always yeah. wrong. That's it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep going. He's distracted by the studio <laughs> audience laughing at him. <laughs> anyway, so he, is, you know, gives me the food. We start eating it. Um, he's talking to me kind of about himself a little bit. You know, those like talkative old men yes. who like seem like they've just been waiting their whole life for to you to walk up. Yes, I had that happen yeah. the other day. Yeah. Yes. And I think especially as like a young person, it's like this whole thing where it's like, let me bestow my wisdom, you know? Um, so he's, he's given his whole shenanigan, his whole rundown. I turn to find, I've, I find out um, that our host, um, he is a Catholic priest. It's a little horror movie vibes. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and he's this kind and of- And you're a young boy. 
Yeah, he's just those two of, things well, go together. Yeah, yeah, ooh, yeah. Has spotlight. I won an Oscar. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, he's kind of white, tannish, um, but he's from Zimbabwe. I'm like, that's interesting because he had this weird accent. And he didn't sound like he was from North Georgia. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, so he starts telling me about how he's been here since 2002. I was like, hey, that's oh, the I year born. I was born. Yeah. Anyway, um, college, anyway, college, y'all. Yeah. Um, hey, it's never too <laughs> late to be born. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh that's funny <laughs> thank you um so he's, he's giving the lowdown his property and he's you know talking about all the work he's put into it like he had he built like the houses and he's like been maintaining stuff and i start zoning off because there's this 10 15 foot stone wall that's like 10 feet behind um the guest cabin in the house and it's got you know, it's like a smooth finish, but there's a really big mound of dirt that's like eight feet high behind the guest cabin in kind of one spot. So I'm like, okay, construction. Oh, that's where, where he kills his victims and puts them. Well, yeah, I think he might have another spot for that. We'll get to that. Oh, God. Um, I might need another cocktail. <laughs> but he... You should have made a double. I mean, yeah, it's never too late. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> I start zoning off and I zone back in and he's like, yeah, and it's 90 feet long and I've been working on them for 14 years and it's like eight to 10 feet tall. And before I can ask what, he's like, okay, let me show you in your cabin. I'm like, okay. So before we get into the cabin, I'm like, hey, you know, I was thinking about leaving and picking up some groceries, you know, so I have some food for the trip. And he's like, well, I'll make you breakfast in the morning and it's nighttime. So wouldn't it be safer to go? He also had like a weird, you know, voice. Wouldn't it be safer to go then? Don't you agree? So let's wait till morning for you to go get your groceries. So immediately I'm thinking, this okay, Airbnb when someone host, tells me something safer, it really kind of starts creeping me out. Right. This Airbnb host is crossing some lines. Like I want my pop tarts. Let me go get them. But he shows me into the cabin, which is really kind of cute and rustic, and has like Wi-Fi and, and like a magnetic stove. Oh, good! I'm glad stove. there was Wi-Fi and all these nice features. And it would have been a great cabin, except for all the horrifically violent Catholic art. Yeah. Okay. So you, okay? I yeah. feel like I really. Um, could someone bring me the bottle of Big Black Dick <laughs> rum, please? Because I feel like I need it. <laughs> 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 okay thanks jason uh this is jason's last day he's bringing me the rum i'm just gonna add rum to what i'm drinking y'all okay can we get 50 cc's okay <laughs> <laughs> <Kay>, cheers <laughs> i might have killed my 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 18 year old guest okay so um that's my cat and pinned luke laugh that happened okay i think i need a, I, I need a sip of chalky milk i just yeah yeah need he needs breathe. a sip of his chocolate milk i'm gonna add some rum to what i'm drinking vodka rum it's all cheers okay so i can give you some some fun details i love the details about the oh, catholic God. art so the first thing that you notice is the sculpture it's not a painting the sculpture of jesus christ head coming out of the wooden wall Right by the bed. So when you lay your Hello, Jesus. <laughs> when you lay Well, it's a good thing you didn't bring a girl because yeah. Jesus would have been there yeah. with you. Well, also the, the interesting thing <laughs> the interesting hi mom. The interesting <laughs> thing is that it is specifically one person. And the negative review was, you know, they said, Oh, he was scary, blah blah blah. But his response to that was like, Oh, I'm sorry they didn't understand that this was not meant for two people. So I'm like, yeah, it's only for one person, lady. And she used all caps. So I was like, Yeah. My mistake. You might have listened to that one because yeah, um yeah, yeah. So um oh also in her review, she's like, and when Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold up. The review, his response was this place is only met for one person. Person, yeah, one person, because that's normal. Yeah, please don't bring anyone with you. No chaperone, like yeah. no, no safety net. You just yeah. are supposed to go by. Your... Okay, I mean, I don't know. Keep going, Luke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep going, Luke. <laughs> really feeling like his overprotective right, non mother right. mother right now. It's okay. But, it's okay. No. So okay. the sculpture of Jesus's head comes out of the wall. So when you lay on the pillow, his <clears throat> eyes are staring at you. It's so cool. I'm like. I'm like, where did you get this, host? And he's like, ah, I don't remember. I'm like, yeah, that's an interesting so thing to say. 
that when you're trying to sleep. Because I feel like it was, it was, well, we'll get to that too. Um, I didn't get a lot of shut eye, oh but God. It, like, I was like, you would have remembered where you got a sculpture of Jesus's head coming out of the wall. But he was like, eh, I don't know. Um, a few other things, there were a bunch of creepy books, you know, that were like religious, but like they were definitely kind of like weird, like fringe religious stuff. And one of them had a sticky note that said, do not read. And I was like, oh, and guess what? I did not even look at the book twice. I was like, nope, I'm nope, pretty nope. sure I would have read it. No, no, no. And no. then I might have died. Yeah, yeah. That's how he finds his victims, the people who don't pay attention Probably. to the sign that says don't Probably. read. Probably. Um, so, oh, there was one more. I really wish I, like, right now the Botox wasn't keeping my face <laughs> from fully reacting to this. There was one more. There's so, there were also some other just kind of crucifixion artwork, which is, you know, more, I mean, more commonplace. But there's, yeah. He was a priest. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but. Yeah. So there's one more in the cabin that I want to mention, which is this really beautiful portrait. It's kind of like a sketch um, style of uh, Jesus laughing and joy. But you know those uh, portraits where the eyes follow you? Like Mona Lisa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go from staring at it standing up, because it's right near the bed, and you sit down on the bed and look at it, his eyes roll over black and his mouth rolls over black. So it looks like he's like screaming in agony. And I'm like, that's so cool. And I did like over and over and I was like, wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so Vincent, you know, um, oop, host name. Anyway, he shows. We don't know him. Yeah. He Hi. shows me around the, the cabin and then he, he's like, okay, well, let me show you into my house in case you want to take a shower. And I'm Wait, like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This would be a good time. Hold up. Know. Okay. So. <laughs> One, only one person's supposed to stay there. Yeah. Two, there's no shower. Yeah. Three, he wants you to shower in his house. Well, he said in case you wanted to. He wasn't. Did I mean, you check to make sure there are no cameras in that shower? Uh, well, I did not end up taking a shower, and we can get to that, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, keep going. Keep going. I'm just a little traumatized. Yeah, it's not, you're, you're going to be more upset at my actions later. Um. Fuck. It gets a little dicey. So, but you know, to be fair, it's like we're in kind of the middle of nowhere, right? You know what I mean? And yeah, so it's hard yeah, to I'm get totally water seeing there. serial killer vibes right now. So, like, yeah, there's no no shower in in the in the guest uh, cabin. But he's like, you know, what he says. So he shows me into his house first, and his house is two rooms. It's bigger than the cabin, but not super big. the The main room is there's nothing in the middle of the room. It's all empty, and he has like thousands of books like lined against the wall, like like so many books, super dense, like tons of books, again, tons of violent Catholic art, and really interesting. It was kind of cool. Like it was, a, it was a good sculpture, but there was the sculpture of uh, Mary holding the dead body of Jesus, and it was like three feet tall in the corner of his living room. Like this guy, he's got art. Yeah, so there's that. Then he shows me into his bedroom, and I'm like, okay, but but he's like, you know, he's showing you his bedroom. Well, that's where the shower is. Wait, what? Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, but he. Oh. But to be fair, to be fair, he made it less creepy because he was like, oh, he made it less creepy. Yeah, because he. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Mm, what the mm, mm, fuck, mm, Luke? Mm, mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, okay, well. <laughs> you know, again, like I'm saying, you're going to be more upset at me. Uh, okay. If you think this is bad, just wait. Um, oh, God, because already you're dead in my... my right, my, yeah. My, I'm really surprised that Luke is sitting here right well, now. Would you want me to talk story. about the guns? So he, on his wall... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. The guns. Ooh. Yeah. No biggie. So uh, in his bedroom, he's got his bed, some deer heads, because he was kind of dressed like a hunter. Um, and he's got three guns on his wall and, you know, two rifles and a shotgun. And I'm like, OK, this makes me a little nervous, but they're kind of hung up. It's a little bit more of a display thing. You know, I didn't see active ammo boxes. So I was like, he probably won't shoot me. Um, but, you know, he's a hunter, so I'm like, okay, give him the benefit of the doubt. Then he shows me his shower, which is, you know, right in his bedroom. Mm. Anyway, he's like, if you want to take a shower, just let me know. I'll give you privacy. I'll get out. You know, I'll go on a walk. Oh, well, thank God he's not going to stand there and watch you while yeah, you shower yeah. in his bedroom. I probably would have just With his guns. Been, yeah, I probably would have just And violent smelly. religious yeah. art and yeah. books that say do not read. Yeah. 
Um, jumping back a little bit, I forgot to describe our host, which I feel like is an important detail. Okay. So, you know, he's tannish um, from Zimbabwe. He's got, he's probably like early 50s, right? So he's got kind of that salt and pepper thing going on. Um, so he's like 10 years older than me. Sure. Uh, <laughs> ooh, I, don't know, I don't know how to respond to this. Uh, 2002. Um, <laughs> but he's super muscular, like insanely fit. And I would have been so nervous except for the fact that homeboy was like 5'6". So that made me feel better. Well, I thought that. And then a yeah. guy I, like hooked up with choked me till I was unconscious. So, you know, that doesn't mean much. Oh, really? The height thing doesn't matter? Oh, God. Yeah, height doesn't seem to matter. I thought huh. the same thing. I thought, huh. oh, hey, he's littler than me. Like, right. I can take him. That right. didn't work out so well for me. So he could have, like, broken my neck with his bare hands even yeah. though he was 5'6"? Yeah. Uh. This guy did. So you think, okay, he showed me the guest cabin. He showed me the house. What mm. else is there left to see? Nothing. So we exit his house, and I'm thinking... I actually said, okay, I'm going to, you know, get my stuff. It was great, you know, to meet you. And he's like, oh, but Luke, I want to show you my catacombs. And I'm like, what? What did you say? And he was like, yeah, remember I was talking about this I, earlier? I, I don't know how to sit right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Wanted to show you his, his what? His, so catacombs. What the fuck? Right, right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, okay, <sighs> you're going to be mad at me, but... I like that he keeps saying, you're going to be mad at me. What the fuck, Luke? I was actually kind of excited to see the catacombs. Because it sounded this cool. This kid has apparently a death wish. A, a little bit. Uh, you should meet my oldest brother. <laughs> Dear God, but, that's a whole other episode. Yeah. He okay, catches, he catches so let's hear TikTok. about these fucking yeah. catacombs. Who the fuck has catacombs? Would, are you familiar with like Roman history and what catacombs are? Yes, I they're, know what they yeah, they're are. they're underground burial sites. Yes. But I don't think that, okay, let, let me, let's just, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, but, and he was like, yeah, remember, you know, because I had zoned off and he was like, Nin the catacombs are 90 feet. zoned off for right. then fucking catacombs? Yeah. The catacombs are 90 feet long and I've been working on them for 14 years and all this jazz. I'm like, okay. Who okay. the fuck is in the goddamn catacombs? Well, so he's like, let me show you them. I'm like, okay. So the way his house is set up is we took these stairs down, but when we took these stairs down, it wasn't like underground in his basement. So we were still kind of outside. You this. don't go downstairs. You don't but go upstairs. Were, you were, go outside. This is horror movie 101. Well, they were outside stairs. Get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. So don't go down the stairs. we go to don't these. Go down the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, spoiler alert, I went down the stairs. <laughs> um, we go down these outdoor stairs, and do you know that 14-foot stone wall? Yeah, yeah, you so mentioned that at the beginning. A 10-foot wooden door with intricate carvings of violent crucifixion, uh, the hands of Jesus And you went nails. through this fucking door? Well, yes and no, which, I mean, yes. Uh, so... But one more detail about the door. It has a rubber seal. And I'm thinking, that's ho, weird. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> right? Like, why would you need a rubber seal on your underground tunnels? But I'm like, I'm sure he has ventilation, probably to keep the bugs out, you know. Um, but he's telling me about the door. Luke. Yeah. Okay, production crew, don't ever let Luke travel alone again if he thinks this is, like, normal and just to keep the bugs out. We don't let him get lunch alone. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's okay. I love me too. Oh, we just um, want you to survive. Yeah. So he tells you're gonna love this. He tells me about, uh, about the door, right? He's like, a fr it's really special to me because a friend of mine made it. It was actually the last project that he worked on before he passed away. And I'm oh, like, oh. So in the moment, I was like, oh, that's sweet. Thinking back, I was like, huh, a little sus, you know. So anyway, he uh, before immediately before he opens the door, he turns to me, looks me straight into my eyes and he goes now luke i now this is this is this is awesome this is right out of a movie he goes now luke i want to show you these catacombs so you can have some real dreams tonight holy fucking shit and at this point, no 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 i don't want real like no 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 <laughs> so at this point kara i'm oh, starting God. to get a little nervous 
you're just starting to get a little nervous. Yeah. Um, so he swing. Yeah. Yeah. You want? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You want some real dreams? Just take some like medical marijuana. It's like the wrong amount, and yeah. you'll have some real dreams that way. Yeah. That's good. Which is, I didn't necessarily want to do Vincent's way, but um. So he swings open the door into his underground catacombs that he's been building for the last fourteen years, and ta-da! It's a wet kind of clay tunnel, insects, like crickets that are huge, crawling around all over the place, and a string of light bulbs leading down into the dark tunnel. Oh, this is how you die. Yeah, yeah. But here's the best part about these light bulbs is he goes, yeah, and the light bulbs don't work, so we'll have to use my flashlight. But here's the thing. They're not even plugged in. I'm looking at them. They're unplugged. And there's an extension cord leading to his workshop that's on the lower part of the house that's, that was like four feet away. So I'm like, did he just unplug it? Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. And yes. That's what right, they do. Right. That's what they do. Right. Oh, my God, Luke. Right. And the interesting thing about going into a dark tunnel with a flashlight that you don't have is that at any point, the person can turn off the flashlight and then you're in the pitch dark. And Isn't that that's when he kills you. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, oh really God. violent. Got to love the place. No. So we start walking down this tunnel and he's super talkative. You know, he's all into his tunnel because it's his, it's his passion project. He has a fucking mud tunnel yeah. with bugs and non-working lights because they aren't plugged in. Yeah. Got it. <sighs> so we go 20 feet down and we reach a fork in the road or the tunnel. So on the right, it curves around, keeps going into the dark abyss of the tunnel. <laughs> and then on the left, it's this kind of unfinished, like it's, you can kind of probably like crawl down it, but it, it's kind of like a little bit unfinished. It's, but like it goes around the corner too. So it's definitely like goes somewhere. And I'm like, oh, where does that go? And he looks at- Why did you ask that? I was curious. I was, I'm not gonna lie. Even though I was nervous, as soon as we went into the tunnel for the first 40 feet, I was really excited. I was like, oh my God, a tunnel. Yeah. But I ask him, where does it go? <laughs> where does it go? And he goes, oh, it isn't finished yet. I'm like, oh, that's Did that's you volunteer bad. to help him? Well, no, but I'm like, that's my bad. Oh my God. Where will it go when it is finished? And he's, he says again, with that kind of like cold look in his eyes, it isn't finished yet. Keeps walking. I'm like, that's weird. Um, yeah. See, I told this is a good story, right? <laughs> Woo! Story time. Um, so we go 20, maybe even 30 feet more down, just tunnel, you know, and he's walking fast. He's in front of me with that flashlight. I'm trying not to trip. Um, oh, yeah, there are also like, like bullfrogs too. Yeah. Okay. Well, just one, just one. So I don't know. Um, Nature, because you're underground in a mud tunnel. Right. To the catacombs. Here's the cool part. It's not just a tunnel. It leads into a room. He built a room underground. The so, catacombs. Yeah. So it's like. The cat. Yeah. Mm, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Any questions so far? I kind of been like not. Oh, no, no, there. no, 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 no questions. Pretty fully aware that you went into a mud tunnel to the catacombs. Some weird dude with super violent art with religion and his shower is in his house. Yeah, no, I got the story. And he's an immigrant. Go immigrants. Um, they get the job done. Yeah. I, I actually really like Hamilton. So it's like Hey, only, you got my reference. Yeah, it's the only musical that, I, well, not the only, but one of the only musicals that I really like got into. Okay, In the Heights is even better. Yeah, my... My brother I love in the Heights. got into like all of that stuff, so we played it for our whole family. I've actually listened to that too. It's okay. Really the movie yeah. is really good. It's actually better than the play, which I've never said. Oh, oh, anyway, right, sorry, right. we're back to the story. Right. I got distracted. I was a theater major. It's not my fault. So spherical room, and spherical room. Probably, I'm picturing like a moment from Hamlet in here. Yeah, think of well again clay, but think of this room. It's probably a little. A little bigger than this room, and the ceiling's like 14, 15 so, feet tall. Just so you guys know, the room where we filmed this is actually a conference room. I know it looks like we're in my living room, and I do set up oh, my furniture yeah. this way. But this is actually like a small conference room. 
So this room was like 20 feet wide, 14 feet tall. So okay. it was it was impressive that he had built it underground. And um, he, who he, digs tunnels underground and builds rooms for their apparently a, apparently Catholic priests with uh, Airbnbs, but. Um, he also built out this bench, which I thought was cool. It was like a little bench out of the clay that you could sit on. I was like, that's neat. But no, genuinely, I'm, all jokes aside, I was actually really nervous at this point. I was like, this is making me uncomfortable. I don't like this. But I was also battling with just my like, this is so awesome, catacombs type of you know energy. So the other cool detail about this room Oh, so it wasn't a dead end. There's a tunnel that goes up and to the right, but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, there were these wooden support beams jutting in and out of various places, and they were big. And he's like, yeah, I did the seismic equations wrong, so it's actually structurally unstable. I have to fix it. And at that point, I'm like, oh, my God, I could die at any moment. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Can I take a sip of my chocolate milk? <laughs> I was, I'm just getting a little nervous. You don't have to, like, ask me if you can drink. You're allowed to drink whenever you want. I mean, I've gone through an entire cocktail. You wouldn't cocktail. give me alcohol. Don't tell me I, I can drink whenever I want. No, I mean, you can't drink alcohol. Right. I'm See? not giving you booze. See? I mean, my number one, like, recurring guest is a cop, so I should not have you drinking yeah. booze. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still a bad influence, but... Go hot cop. But, yeah, he's great, right? Yeah. He's entertaining as hell. But, okay, um... Okay, keep going. So... He tells me that, and then, you know, so he's been leading me this whole time, and then he's like, hey, do you want to go and see where that tunnel leads? Oh, like, let's go check out right. that tunnel. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself. Two more details, two more. He said that he wanted to turn the tunnels into a fun, interactive Airbnb experience so he could book a person in the house and book a person in the tunnel. I'm sorry. Someone wants to stay inside a mud tunnel with bugs and frogs well, in the catacombs. I don't think he's tested the market. Um, I don't think there is say, a market. So yeah, I think we'll get. There. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, maybe someone filming a horror movie. Right. And then they want to stay there. Right. Right. A second thing was I asked him, okay, so what do you use these for? Which probably yeah. a dumb question. Yeah. I kind of want to know what he uses but, them for. You know, he was, his answer was. For you. For you. <laughs> he used them wish. for you. His answer was. He's still alive. <laughs> He's not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Luke laughed. Luke laughed the moment. Uh, and he, he, he says, he says. You know, a lot of various things, which is not a direct answer, but he says, one thing I will tell you is sometimes when I can't sleep, as often happens, I'll come down here at three, four in the morning and I'll sit on the floor and it's so quiet in here that if you sit still long underground. Right. If you sit so long enough, you can hear the blood rushing in your own ears. I'm like, that is so cool. Science. Um Anyway, or creepy, right? That too. Or I was because genuine, genuinely, that was a lot of I just I kept battling with being like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, and like this is so neat. Who does this? So back to the tunnel thing. So he's like, hey, do you wanna go up ahead by yourself? And see sure, you? sure, let me go by myself into a dark right. dirt tunnel with bugs and frogs and you might murder me see where the exit tunnel leaves and i wasn't expecting that because he had been leading me and i was like oh my god oh my god so at this point i'm super nervous and i was like uh yeah and he didn't hand me the flashlight so at this point wait he wants you to go in the dark by yourself yeah in the exit tunnel exit tunnel so i'm super nervous right i'm oh, like jesus christ genuinely Luke. genuinely super scared i go up and it goes sharply to the right. I peek my head around the corner, and I see eight feet, ten feet away from me, a dead end wall. Um, oh Jesus! Yeah. So, <laughs> Kara's podcast day. Um. So, oh, Luke. Yeah. Luke. So you, he sent you to a dead end. Well, here. Let me. Let me. So. At this point, how is I'm, this child still alive? At this point, yeah, this is see, it's so oh good. Oh my it's so god, good how I'm here, or am I? Um, I don't think he's a ghost. He's been on set with me all day today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm way too nice to be a ghost. Come on. So uh, the chocolate milk or the mic? Oh my 
making sure you're not a ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. <laughs> oh, oh, he's not a ghost. He's really there. <laughs> yeah, you can feel my sweaty hands because I'm so nervous. Um, you're doing a good job, kid. You. You're doing a good job. Thank you. With um, your super creepy fucking story. So at this point, right, where were we? Okay, saw the dead end. Two thoughts in my mind. One, he's like a pervert, and I'm going to go back out. He's going to have his dick out. I'm like, oh, my God, he's a pervert. Or two, he's going to have an axe and chop me to little bits. Those are my two possibilities. And I'm about to sprint back down, fully prepared, the adrenaline surging in my veins. I was about, because my mom has taught me about this, um, in hand-to-hand combat, it's a good idea to take the palm, like the flat of your hand, and jam it against somebody's like nose right here because it can basically like knock a bone into their brain and kill them oh i did not know this i need to learn this stuff so that was my plan and i was like swiveling around to try and attempt to do that against his five six self which now i learned doesn't matter he could no it doesn't matter i'm telling you dang like i'm five seven the guy was five six Mm -hmm. i thought oh if he tries something i can take him and like five seconds later, I was unconscious. Yeah. Ooh, not that good. didn't work out so well. Yeah. Ooh. So yeah, he could have t- taken you even at five, six. Anyway. It happens. Before I fully commit to the rundown, try and, you know, knock a bone into his brain thing, I'm like, let me check, which is probably a bad idea, but I ran to the end of this dead end tunnel and it was dark because I had no flashlight. And I put my hand against the wall like panicked and I feel ladder rung, ladder rung, ladder rung. I look up, the slightest eek of moonlight, the door is open. It was an exit hatch. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. He ran to the dead end. Yeah. Well, just because I wanted to be sure before I like assaulted him. Oh, right. Him, like you know? be sure that it's a dead end. But it was. And the hatch was open and moonlight softly was spilling in. Um, but interesting thing, you know, entrance door, rubber seal. Yeah, exit yeah. door rubber seal what? and i don't know if i mentioned this but throughout the tunnel in the roof there were these rubber tubes that were open letting in air which is good but because they, there was a rubble seal on the door preventing air from coming in okay but but, but yep. no i think because they were like letting air from like the like the ground level but they all had these hinges with caps on them so if you wanted to you could swing them close which i'm like why would you need that because he's dropping people down in the dungeon I, I, I mean, I guess, yeah. So at this point, Chatty Cathy just stops talking. He's, he's, he just starts walking away after I, and I was acting, he could see, like, he could see my face. I was like, ah, you know, like very scared. He starts walking away, like very fastly. I follow him, you know, we get out, he closes the door, he says nothing. He walks towards his house and he's like, okay, Luke, I'll see you in the morning. I'll make you breakfast. Walks in, says nothing else. At this point, I'm like, Oh my God, what just happened? You went into his kill dungeon. But wait, there's more, there's more. Um, and you escaped. Yeah. He was maybe hoping you came running towards him. I'm, uh, probably. Because then he would have killed you. Probably. And then he wouldn't have gotten a new res- res- stars. I can't speak, I am drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm drunk for this. Justin warned me. Um, question break, any questions so far? Oh, no. Okay. No, no, okay. no, nope. No so, questions. I am drunk, but I am following this story. Yeah. So we're winding down now. And he didn't even offer me, like, offer to help me get all the, like, Oh, no, why would he? Truck. And I was like, that's kind of rude of him. He's going to make you your poison breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Which I did think about. I was like, huh, the, the getting snacks thing. Oh, no, that's too dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, don't go to the grocery right, store. Right. That shit's dangerous. <laughs> Just go in the catacombs. With yeah. no light. Yeah. That's not dangerous. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Okay, so um, I, I bring my bags in, you know, put them in my cabin, looking at Jesus' head coming out of the wall, like, hey, Jesus. Um, and at this point, I'm just trying to relax. I'm like, that felt really weird, but I think what I'm telling That's myself. That's really fucking weird. What I'm telling myself is I'm overreacting. There were good reviews, Luke. There were good reviews. Ten people gave him five stars and said that he was nice. So I'm just, you know. Go with your gut, Luke. Go with your gut. But my gut was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. So I, I start trying to relax, you know, wind down, watching NFL highlights. I'm like, okay, you know, just get in, just get in some me time. Um, I'm surprised he had a TV. <laughs> 
Well, no, it was just on my phone. He had Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, right. I forgot he had but, Wi-Fi. But there was no cell service. So later on, I thought if he wanted to at any point, he could cut this Wi-Fi off because it was the middle of nowhere. There's like no cell service. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. See, I'm missing details, but anyway. No, no, you're adding the details. The details yeah. are coming. There are details. There's so many details. Yeah, it's cool. It was, it was a fun time. Um, <laughs> okay, keep going, kid. Okay, so I'm relaxing. An hour and a half later, I start thinking about it more. And I'm like, you know, something feels wrong. I'm, like, cause the, you think? Because being in the catacombs genuinely terrified me. But when I saw the exit, I was like, okay, I calmed down a little bit. And, you know, there were other aspects about him that seemed kind of normal. Like, he talked about his job, and he talked about the weather. So I'm like, okay. What the fuck did he do besides priesting? Oh, no, that was just his job. Oh, he priested. But, like, he just, he, he told me about it. Oh, also, his church is two and a half hours away. So he lives in the middle of nowhere just because. Because he's a serial killer. Yeah, that, and, you know, being in nature is nice. That, that's, that's a good thing. So, uh... I, I call my mom, I'm telling her about it. And my mom is the type of mother where, you know, if I like bust my knee or hurt my ankle, she's like, you don't need to go to the ER, son, you're fine. I don't want to pay the copay, walk it off. You know, like does. tough, tough love type of mom thing. So when my mom was getting very nervous and telling me that maybe I should consider leaving, I was like, this isn't good. No shit, Sherlock. Yeah. <laughs> Dear God. Um, so... And she's like, okay, but I'm like, mom, mom, there's good reviews. But she's like, well, do any of them mention the catacombs? And sure enough, review after review, not one mention. Which, that starts to make me nervous, because I'm like, am I the first person that he showed these goddamn That made it out alive. That, but I feel like, in my defense, I feel like if 10 people died, Airbnb would have, like, you know... And like, yo, not what's up per here? se. Hey, how's, they how's just didn't movie? leave a review. Yeah, that's true. That's because they did. That's true. That's true. Um. So, I finished talking to my mom. I'm just kind of chilling, thinking about, okay, maybe I should go to bed. And I can't then believe I, your mother didn't just jump in the car and like come and get your ass. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh jeez. And then I hear the door swing open. I'm in... Not, Wait, in your fucking room? No, not the cabin door. The catacomb oh. door. And Wait, he how walks, close is the catacomb to your room? Um, So there's like a patio in between, so probably like 25 feet. And there's also the only light out there. The only light out there is like these tiki torches, which I was like, ooh, that's fun. So, um, he, yeah. So I hear him swing it open. He walks in, silence for like a minute, and then he starts praying i assume out loud and not english and i'm like whoa this is not proper airbnb host behavior he would definitely be scaring people and like i'm scared and i'm like peeking through the window and he's like I'm James Grace, blah, 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 blah. it was either latin or some other language um so he does that five minutes on stop when he stops i quickly dart back to my bed and like act like I'm on my phone because I don't want him to like w be walking out and make direct eye contact with me like staring out the window that felt like a bad idea um so at this point I call Katie who's my girlfriend and we're talking on the phone and she's also really nervous and I'm like okay so the Katie the, you had every reason to be right, nervous I'm like the two women who matter most to me are nervous and I'm like this is a bad thing and they have good judgment um oh Luke so she she's like refusing to get off the phone with me because she's so nervous that I'm gonna die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it sounds like you're gonna die. And I start getting more and more paranoid and nervous. But then I go, I'm like, okay, let me let me lock the door. You know, you didn't lock no, the no, motherfucking no. door to no. begin with. I would have locked the motherfucking door instantaneously. What the fuck, Luke? Well, I mean, I usually lock the door when I go to sleep. You know, that's no, 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 no. You lock the motherfucking door. You walk in, you lock the door. You walk in, you lock the door. That, that's a good point. I should start doing that from now on. <laughs> so you know so much. You're so smart. Because I'm fucking smart. old as shit. But 2002. you walk in and you lock the door. But then, and I like, you know, shake the handle, make sure it's locked. But I'm like, hang on. He, he never gave me a key. And this was, by the way, this was my first Airbnb experience. I don't know if I gave that context, but I've never done Airbnb before. 
So he had the key to the room and you... Well, well, I look, I open the door and on the outside there's like the key and I'm like, okay. And I try and get it out and for five minutes straight until I realize and I look a little bit and you can tell that it's kind of like melted a little bit. It's like welded in somehow so that when you're on the inside of the cabin, you lock the door, you shake, it's like, ah, locked door. At any moment he could walk up, turn that key to the right, open the door, it's unlocked. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. So at at this point, I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. I'm going to die here. I'm going to die here. The full panic. Did you, like, move furniture in front of the door? I would have been, like, shoving yeah, shit in front of the door. I did. Like, well, we put in all the furniture in front of the door. Funny you say that. I went ahead. Um, there wasn't a ton to move because I didn't want to, like, break up his st- I didn't want to break I want to break up his shit. Who gives shit about being polite at this moment? Fucking A. Yeah, so I put, I put like, a chair on the door handle. So if I fall asleep, it'll, like, you know, like, knock loudly on the floor and I'll be woken up. Um, and then I'm – and then I also – We're going to have to discuss yeah, how to travel yeah, properly in the yeah. future. Well, I did. I did, you know, remember to bring all my toiletries, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste – I'm so proud products, of you. All that jazz. Yeah. Oh, so, dear God. So I, this I did, boy is going to die. Right. I did the, the chair on the door thing, and he also had, like, axes for chopping firewood. Um, so I grabbed a small one, and I, like, hit it under um, a pillow on a nightstand. So, there were axes in your Airbnb room. Well, yeah, because there were – so there was an electric heater, and then there was, like, a wood chop heater, like a little wood – like a traditional, like, stove heater. I was like, this is so rustic and cute. Um yeah, that's, very Pinterest. That's exactly what I would think. Right. <laughs> totally. Anyway, so I'm like laying in bed trying, like I was like trying to fall asleep because I was like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then I realized, okay, I'm not falling asleep. And the, the main thing. I'm sorry, Luke. Why did you not just get your ass in your fucking car and start okay, driving? This is, this is a really good point. Two things. And you were supposed to stay here three nights? Yeah. Two things. There's a funny little thing with my truck that I've never gotten fixed where you cannot turn on the engine of the truck without turning on the lights. So whenever, like, it's just, you know, there's no lights off mode that I works. don't give a shit if he sees the lights. You get in your fucking truck and you drive away. But my thought process is, we're, this is night one of three. So we're 20 minutes into the movie. <gasps> we're 20 minutes into the movie. So he's not going to want to kill me until oh, night no. 30. No, no. But if he's forced to, if my bright LEDs shine in his windows, because my dad, like, replaced the old lights and made them super, super bright. So if he's forced to, he'll run out there with one of his three guns and shoot me in the head. So I'm like... You drive low. Uh, yeah, that's true, too. But my thought process is, again, I don't think he's going to kill me till night three because we're 20 minutes into the movie. How lame would that be? Like, there was an actual logic oh my God. in my brain. Oh, my God. You know? And also, I like I felt like he was trying to build my trust, too. You know? So yeah, he yeah, yeah. Because he's a serial killer. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. Um... Oh, also, this is jumping back a bit, but um, when we were in the catacombs in the big room, one of the cool things he said to me, one of the amenities is, and if at any point you want to come down into the catacombs, feel free to. You don't need me. If Like, you just, you know, feel them, he said this, feel them calling in the middle of the night. Just, you know, feel free to look around and explore. And I was like, okay, was there anyone actually buried in these catacombs? Not that I saw. But again, I didn't do a bunch of digging around, which we'll get to digging. Um... So, sorry, where was I? Something, something. So I don't know. He said at the catacombs, call to you. Oh, I was trying to stay you up. Go to- right. I was trying to stay up. Um, and then I'm starting to calm myself down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep, right? And then mm-hmm. I'm talking to Katie, and she's like, okay, if you feel safe going to sleep, you know, leave me on the phone. I'm like, okay, yeah. And then Oh, Katie ain't sleeping. And then, she's sitting there with the damn phone all night yeah. long. And then I start she hearing. She woman, she knows. I start hearing, chuk, 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 underneath into the far end of my cabin. I'm like, that is a weird noise, weird noise. So I unplug everything. So I'm like, it has to be like the ice machine. So I unplug everything. It's still happening. I put my ear to the floor, and I'm hearing, chuk, chuk, chuk. And at first I was like, there's no way he's digging. And I was like, no, it's like too repetitive. It has to be a machine. But then after like two minutes, the sound switches up. It's like, you know, walking around and like, like moving stuff and more. 
And then at that point, I realized 2.30 in the morning, my lovely Catholic priest, Zimbabwe Airbnb host, is digging not only under, but like, it's not directly under the cabin, but it's like eight feet away, like eight to 10 feet away. And remember that tunnel left that wasn't right, finished? Right, because it wasn't done. And remember the mound of dirt on the wall? where there was construction going on. That dirt got bigger. So I think he was digging a cab, like a tunnel under my guest cabin. So at that point, super scared. After I kept my ear to the floor. After 15 minutes, I heard him stop. Get in your fucking truck and go! Again, I didn't want to wake him up and him shoot me in the head. He was awake! He was digging a tunnel! I didn't think of that. Clearly. I should have carried my ones. Uh, but oh my god so then when he stops again i run to the bed i don't want to you know see him with the shovel so i don't want him to like shovel me to death um but i so that and, and then at that point i was terrified to go to sleep because remember the thing he said earlier he's like oh i'm taking you to these catacombs so you have some real dreams tonight my thought process is he drugged me and if i fall asleep he's either gonna um take me and tie me up down there or like something crazy is gonna happen and also the jesus like sculpture, a little scary. So that didn't help me when I put my head on the pillow. So I end, yeah, yeah. I end up, I, <laughs> I end up staying all night long. Um, you know, between four and five, I had so much time to look at hotel options because I didn't want to go right back home. I still wanted to do my hiking. Oh, keep hiking. So, so keep I, hiking. Right. I booked a hotel for the the, the two nights that were remaining, um, and then at. Seven in the morning, I had this text ready, and it was like, hey, Vincent, you know, no need to make me breakfast. I'm going to go on a sunrise hike. I'll be back, like, 11 or 12. Because I... Peace the fuck out! Because my main thing was, like, I don't want him to think that I'm, you know... Oh, don't think... Don't be rude. Well, like, I didn't want him to make breakfast and then me leave. Okay, so, darling, I have this whole episode on, like, yeah. the fact that we need to stop worrying about making other people comfortable when it puts our own safety at risk. I did this for women. Apparently, 18-year-old guys need it, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't want to get a negative review as, like, a... like. Who oh, gives a shit? Oh, I made him breakfast. He has mo motherfucking catacombs. No, and no, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Jesus Christ. So we're wrapping up. We're coming to our finale. It's not It's not that big of a deal. But I have all my bags, and, like, it's pretty heavy. Like, have it all, like, with me. And then I send the text, right? And I open the door. And and I, he's there? No, no. So my truck my truck is right by my, my cabin, God. you know, 75% up. And I go to unlock my truck, like anybody does when they go to leave. And I go, Chick doesn't work it's jammed i do it a second time it's jammed i do it a third damn time my truck is jammed at this point i'm actively terrified i'm thinking i'm gonna die here he busted my truck he's gonna kill me he's gonna drag me into this catacomb skin me alive suffocate me all that so i do it one fourth time i'm banging on the door and miraculously it pops open i'm like yay so i load all of my stuff into my truck and i start backing up and his light switches on in the house. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> drive, then, drive, drive, well, motherfucker. Here's where, here's, here's where I should have taken my time because I almost backed, because you had to back down the super steep driveway. It's night, you can Whatever, only see Whatever, you it. fucking rotate and you don't, you drive over his fucking grass, who gives a shit? Well, no, there's not enough even room to rotate, like without like risking like, you know, like, just who like, gives a shit well no not messing up his stuff like i think i would have like crashed my like there was it was very tight but anyways backing up that's why he has a fucking backing up driveway i'm i almost hit this tree and i have to swerve out of the way at the last second and i like break because i'm like he's not coming out of the house yet i need to take my time i don't want to crash and be stuck here so then i slowly exit out and then i zoom off at like 65 miles yeah no shit motherfucker yeah drive 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 yeah. And then my my hotel check in wasn't till three that day. So who I, gives a shit? Just go right, right. So I left and I ended up having a nice day, um, throwing up in a grocery store parking lot because I was very dehydrated um, and very scared. And then I ate I some think I would have been bars. puking in a yeah. And also, you know how I wanted to go hiking? I went hiking with no water because I had ran out and I didn't remember to bring them to this mountain. He's eighteen, y'all. Yeah. And no sleep. And I ended up having this great um, hike on a local mountain. If you ever go to Helen, Georgia, check out Mount um, Yono. Super cool. Uh, Just don't stay at the catacombs. Yeah. Three miles up, three miles down. After that, I had a super fun trip. Um, and that's kind of my Airbnb story. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, yeah, any I questions, mean, any thoughts, comments, concerns? Elio, thank you for the big black dick. Thank you, It Elio, came in very handy you. again. Now, are um, you looking at me differently? You know, do well, you I'm a little me? concerned about you, Luke. I'm a little me too, concerned. Me too. Um, I feel like I might need to like yeah. guide you a little through life so you don't yeah. die. Yeah. Because I'm afraid you're going to get killed. So, unfortunately, one of the big things I'm sad about from leaving early is I, while I was there, I really was thinking, oh, I can make an awesome documentary piece about this. But he ended up leaving me a bad review and I didn't give him a review because he has my phone number, which I gave to, I gave to him earlier and all that stuff. Um, like before I got there, cause there was not a lot of, you know, I would respond back to his bad review and say, you took me down right, to some motherfucking right. catacombs in the middle of the goddamn night. And I'm an 18 year old kid. Yeah. What the motherfucker well, did so you think? I ended up reporting it to Airbnb. Um, yeah. You report that shit. I really haven't followed up cause I'm too nervous to look, but I think it's sad because now he doesn't trust me enough to make a documentary, but here's my pitch. I work for Short Media Group. I think it would be awesome for us to do a documentary piece about the catacombs. Yeah. Y'all gonna die. So I can't be there, but all of you guys can go. All you guys can go. Moss, especially Moss. Justin doesn't have to go. Blaine doesn't have to go. But especially Moss. Moss can go. Something is happening in the studio audience, and I don't know what it is. But there's lots of pointing and laughing. But yeah, that's, oh. it. that's my story. Oh, Luke. Well, thank you for having me on. This was so fun. Oh, dear God, y'all. Um, well, Luke... I really think I need to help you when you're traveling again. Yeah, I'll, Make sure you don't die. Yeah, yeah. We can do an updated um, travel tips with Kara. <laughs> travel tips episode. <laughs> oh, oh if God. somebody asks okay. you to go to the catacombs, so, uh, get this, yeah, say I, no. I definitely see why my yeah. production crew told me I needed to be drunk right. for this. Bro, what did your buddy Vincent say on that review? Yeah, we need to see oh, the review. Oh. Where's your phone? I need to see this all motherfucking of, all review. Of, all, of he's, all he said was he left the electric heater on and left early with no explanation. No explanation of the middle of the night catacombs tour and the scary ass motherfucking digging in the middle of the night and the weird violent imagery throughout the experience and the do not read book. Yeah. I really wish you had read the Do Not no, Read book. No, 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 no. I'm sure I would be dead if I had read it. You like, would totally be in the catacombs books. forever. Yeah. Oh, Vincent. Yeah. Oh, Vincent. Yep, yep. I needed to be drunk for this. I mean, when your 21-year-old producer tells you to get drunk... Like you kind of really, think you're really holding that big black dick firmly. I am very firmly <laughs> holding the big firmly. black dick, <laughs> like squeezing it. I am very firmly holding the big black dick right now. See, the story made her scared, you guys. Or it might just be a Kara thing. I don't Thank know. Thank God for the big black dick right now. Um, oh dear God, I don't even know how to wrap this shit up, y'all. I really have no idea how to wrap this up. But anyways, um, so yeah, like this is Luke. Would I be able he, to talk about my photography? He's a great photographer. Sure, tell us about your photography, because right now my head's exploding, and so, I'm drunk. Yeah, for anybody who's interested, I take photos. Um, I do film <laughs> photos and digital. You can check those out on Instagram, <laughs> at Luke Humphlet. That's going to be L-U-K-E-H-U-M-P-H-L-E-T-T. <laughs> Oh, by the way, anyone who's born in my generation, you will highly enjoy his Instagram, because it looks like our childhood. And it's really amusing. Also, hire Short Media Group for all your video production needs. <laughs> See you there. Justin. Except for Moss, because he's going to the catacombs alone, and he's going to mysteriously quit a mysterious two weeks. Oh, Justin. New DP promotion. Right now. <laughs> this guy. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, Um. so, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up now, because I'm in slight shock. So, uh, yeah, this was the Halloween edition that my production crew told me I had Woo! to do. And I kind of understand why I had to do it now. Happy because Halloween. Yeah, this is bizarre. Thank you um, so much. We're really glad Luke is still alive. He really needs a fucking bodyguard, y'all. Like, someone guide this boy through life. Because, dear Lord, that's just ridiculous. And, um... Elio, thank you again for the thank big you, black Elio. dick because the one cocktail was not enough for this episode. We're going to let Luke drink his chocolate milk. My chalky milk. Because um, I feel like he needs that right now. And someone, please keep an eye out for him because we would like to keep him alive. He's adorable. 
Oh my God, thanks for watching. Bye y'all.